Have you heard the folk tale, Kelly Pope? Do you want to hear it now? There was an old man who lived in the middle of the forest. He must have been 60 years old. If he was, if he was a day. But nobody knew his women. Most folks just called him Old Jake. He had three loyal hunting dogs that kept him company on long, lonely nights. Their names were known, were known, you know, and Calico. He lived in an old cabin that he had built himself way back in the deep, dark woods. It wasn't very big, but it was just enough. It was just enough for him and his dog. The cabin only had one room. In it, there was a bedroom, a living room, his dining room, and his kitchen too. And one end of his room, there was a nice big open fireplace where he would cook his suppers, warm bones, supper, his warm bones on supper, and warm his bones on the cold wintry night. Old Jake loved hunting, fishing, and the great outdoors. He had a little green garden where he planted vegetables and he would go out <coughs> every day to hunt for fish and rabbits. <coughs> During the month, there was more than enough food to go around. But in the cold months, it was hard to keep his belly full. One winter night, the old man's stomach was grumbling, but there was nothing to eat in the cupboard. But a few moldy potatoes. He struck the fire in the fireplace to keep the cabin warm, and he went to bed. Just about, he was just about to fall asleep when he heard something in the room. He opened up his eyes just in time to see a shadow creeping across the wall. When he sat up in his bed and peered into the darkness, his eyes grew in terror. Sitting across the room was, sitting across the room from him was the weirdest looking creature ever. He had ever seen. It was short and stubby, with pointed ears and bright yellow eyes that seemed to burn with some strange fire. His body was covered in black fur and its head and it had sharp claws and a long thick tail with two points on the end. For a moment, Jake sat just sat there, frozen in fear. He started he stared at the hideous creature. It stared back at him. Then quick as a flash, he grabbed his hunting knife and lunge at the thing. It sprang up and lunge at the thing. And it scurried out the hole. It had clawed the cabin off. The first thing, the thing was so fast, but so was Jake. A split second before it scraped, he brought his knife down squarely on its big tail and cut it off. Ah! The creature let out a horrible screech and disappeared into the night. Old Jake was left standing there with a long thick in one hand and a bloody knife in the other. Jake was about to throw the tail outside when his stomach started rumbling again. He was furnished with the hunger, so he took the tail, cleaned it, he took it, cleaned it, cooked it, and ate it for his supper. It tasted a bit strange. There was a lot of it. It was very chewy, and in fact, it tasted a lot like chicken. 
When his stomach was full, old Jake plunged up the hole in the cab, plugged up the hole in the cab and walked with some old rags and newspapers. Then he got back in bed and drifted off to sleep. He hasn't been before he hasn't been asleep for very before very long before he was awakened by strange noise. It sounded like someone trying to scratch on the scratch his way into the cabin. The old man thought if he stayed really quiet, the thing might go away. He could hear it scratch, scratch, scratch. But then a strange voice outside hissed. Telly bone, telly bone. I want my telly bone. He thought he was, he must be imagining things. But then he heard it again, telly bone. I want my telly button. Old Jake jumped out of bed, ran into the front door, and threw it open. He called out to his dog. You know. I know. You know. Calico, get over there. The dogs came tearing up the cabin. Came tearing up the cabin. And ran around, barking and sniffing and snarling. Couldn't find... I think. Jake shrugged his shoulders and went back to bed. He was just about to drip off the street when he heard the noise again. The sound was sounded the sound the scratching sounded like it was at the window. Mm -hmm. Whatever it was, it really wanted to get in. But the scratching seemed to be on two walls at the same time. Then he heard the one story voice again. This time it hissed a little louder. Telebone. Telebone. Where is my telebone? Old Jake, who wasn't the one to get frightened easily, was getting a little shaky. This was getting really weird, so he eased at the window and called, I know, you know. Come to Calico, come on over here yeah, and see what the scratching on the house. Three dogs bounded up to the porch. It sniffed around and barked and barked and sniffed it, but they never found anything at all. Dick decided to stay up for the rest of the night to protect himself, his dogs, and his little cabin. So he pulled a chair up next to the fireplace, grabbed a blanket from his bed, and settled in for the rest on the wind chilly winter night. Sleep soon overtook him, and once again he dozed off. It's almost dawn when Jake woke. With a start, the sound of scratching seemed to vibrate from every air. One of the cabin, Jake searched for frightenedly for his axe case rifle or something to defend him his self worth but when he was so friend he couldn't find anything. The growl the scratching grew louder. Telebone, tell me bone. Give me back my telebone. Jake yelled back. Leave me alone. I ain't got a telebone. Then he called at his dogs. But this time, the dog didn't come. He waited and went, but still, no dog came running. Jake had never been so scared in his life. He ran to his bed, jumped in it. The scratching and voice grew louder and louder. Telebone, telebone, give me back my telebone. Jake yelled back. Jake yelled back as so loud as he could. I ain't got no telebone, so why don't you leave me alone? And... Go on about your business. I ain't never hurt nobody or nothing. Just leave me alone. The scratching seemed to be inside the house now. 
and the voice was so defending. Telebone, telebone, you took my telebone. Now I'm back. Give it to me now. Jake pulled the covers over his head and stayed and stayed as quiet as he could, but now scratching was in his room. Telebone, telebone, telebone. You better give me back my telebone. Jake felt the thing scratching up the bottom of the bed and onto the covers. Jake eased the covers down to see to see what was steadily approaching. Then he saw a short, stubby creature with pointing ears, fat feet with long claws, and blood shot red eyes that glowed in the dark. Eyes that seemed to burn straight through Jake. Before he could pull the covers over his head, the thing pounced on his chest, looked straight into him. You got my telly bone, and you better give it to me. Jake yelled, I ate it, I ate your telly bone, it's gone. And the thing started to scratch and claw and tear away poor old Jake, trying to get the telly bone back. Jake tried to fight back, but there's nothing. But that thing was too strong and those claws were too strong. Jake screamed, I go through the dark mountains. Then, then stopped, leaving a chilling silence. After a month or two, without hearing from old Jake, the townspeople got worried and came looking for him. They hiked up the mountain and through the woods. woods. When they... When they... But when they got to his cabin, they found it to be torn to shreds. But there was no sign of shake or the dog. They searched. The wood called out to them, Jake, I know, you know, Calico. But there was no answer. Old Jake and the dogs were never seen again. The townspeople say that if you are all alone in the night and you... Listen carefully, you can hear a strange voice calling on the wind. Telebone, telebone, now I've got my telebone. And also, just remember, this is not true. Okay? Peace out. Hope y'all don't have nightmares. Don't listen to this at night. Peace out.